how many of you have experienced a broken relationship? All of us should raise our hands, right? Now, all of us have had at least one broken relationship because prior to coming to Christ, our relationship with God, the most important relationship, is broken. But the good news, the good news for today is this. I like what Sam Chadwick says. Let's read it. It's a wonder what God can do with a broken heart if he gets all the pieces. The main thought that we have today is a continuation from last week of having success or succeeding in relationships. But the main thought is, let's say it, embrace restoration. We need restoration. I need restoration. You need restoration. And our God is the great restorer. Why is it important that you and I embrace restoration? Look at this verse in Matthew chapter 5. Let's read it together. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Jesus is telling them, if you're worshiping God, but then you remember that somebody has something against you, it's not you having something against somebody. Somebody has something against you. What are you to do? He says, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. You see, our relationship with God is connected with our relationship with people. If you're pursuing God with all your heart, you're passionate about Him, you cannot not be passionate about people, the people in your life that you need to restore. It's connected. The vertical is affected by the horizontal, and the horizontal relationship is affected by the vertical. Why else should we embrace restoration? Look at this verse. Now all these things are from God, who what? Reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. If you are in Christ, he has reconciled you to God. Your relationship with God has been restored. And he has entrusted to you and to me what ministry? The ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. How is God going to reconcile the world to himself? Through you and through me. Not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So not only is it important for us to embrace reconciliation because it affects our relationship with God, we should embrace restoration because that is the ministry that God has entrusted to us, to your family. No matter how broken your family is or how unbroken your family is, this is something that we need to do for the rest of our life. What causes breakdown in relationships? I'm going to share with you three. This is not exhaustive. There's more. These are three that I've thought of. One is self-centeredness. Do you agree? Self-centeredness causes relationship breakdown because when you're thinking about yourself, you're not thinking about the other person. We do stupid things when we think about ourselves. We say hurtful things. Jesus tells us, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard, and let's read this together, one another as more important than himself. When you and I start believing that we are more important than the, than the other person, we start acting in a way that will cause a breakdown in relationship. Bible tells us, why do you look into the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? We have a tendency to exaggerate our own righteousness. And therefore, we're out of touch with who we really are, right? In the same way, we have a tendency to exaggerate the other person's sinfulness, and so we're also out of touch with who they are. That's one cost, self-centeredness, thinking that you're better than the other person, acting in a way that you're better than them. 
Because we're not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm, not no, I'm not any better than anybody else. What's another thing? This one. Inability to resolve conflicts. This is a big one. I put under here misunderstandings, miscommunications. Do you agree there's always two parties when it comes to strained relationships? There are. Now, in a very simple way, if, if you have a strained relationship with somebody and you tell your friend, and you explain to them your side, what this person did to you, how bad that person is, which you shouldn't do, right? When you, when you speak um, negative of somebody that changes the perspective of somebody, looking at them, that's not, that's not good. But we do that. It's easy for us to now take sides. And when you take sides without knowing what the other side is, it becomes very confusing. Or when you jump into conclusions, Resolving conflict. We can spend a whole message on that, but that's one of the reasons why we have broken relationships is we, we don't know how to resolve conflicts. This one, ill will to bitterness. Ill will. What, what is ill will? Oh, I don't have ill will. You don't? When you get satisfaction in somebody's demise or failure, maybe somebody you don't like, and you get satisfaction in, in them falling apart, that's ill will. Now, ill will is dangerous because ill will is the seed of hate. Not only the seed of hate, it's the seed of murder. You know, you have a little acorn. Now, a little acorn is small, but inside that acorn has enough seed to germinate a whole forest. That's what ill will is like. It's small but it is dangerous. And what we do is we keep playing back in our minds the things that people did against us and so that ill will becomes deeper. These are the things that we have to watch out for. Ill will, which can very easily become bitterness. When you have bitterness, oh, get ready to get sick. That's when your health goes downward. And that's why the message today is to do what? Embrace restoration. Ah, how do we restore? Are you interested now? Do you want to know how to restore? Three main ideas. Number one, repent. Number two, forgive. And number three, lovingly initiate. What do I mean repent? You know, when you start feeling ill will towards somebody, you immediately take it before God. Say, God, this is not right. I confess this before you. Please, help me to think properly of this person. I repent. This is how you repent, right? You humble yourself, humble myself, ask God for forgiveness, get right with God, restore the vertical relationship, and then restore the horizontal relationships. How about forgive? How do you forgive? Is it easy to forgive? No. It's hard to forgive. Why? Because there's a price right? Somebody has to pay. And we like to believe that if we don't forgive, we make them pay. But look at what Jesus teaches about forgiveness. Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? So Peter was thinking, ah, I'm going to throw out a number that will really show how righteous I am. Jesus answered, I tell you, seven times, not, not seven times, but 77 times. Basically, this is something that you and I have to be doing on a daily, regular basis for the rest of our life. And then Jesus tells him a story. He tells him a story. There was a servant who owed his master 100 60,000 years of work. He couldn't pay, and so the master said, okay, sell his entire family, and they're all going to become my slaves. Now, this servant begged the master, please, give me time. But the master said, okay, I cancel your debt. You're forgiven. Wow. Who paid for it in that situation? The master did. He absorbed it. Right? Somebody always pays when you, when you forgive. This same servant 
had another person, that person owed him 100 days of work. Only 100 days compared to 160,000 years of work. Do you know what that servant did? He choked that servant and said, pay up, pay up now. And the guy said, I can't pay. The servant was unwilling to forgive him. And the people saw this, so they brought it up to their master's attention. What did the master say? Then the master called servant in. This is the one that he had initially forgiven. You wicked servant. He said, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? Shouldn't you have mercy on the person that has hurt you just as God has forgiven you? Shouldn't I have mercy? Shouldn't I forgive? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Who's telling this story? Jesus is. It's a scary story. I don't want to be that servant that was forgiven by God and refuses to forgive other people. Why do we refuse to forgive other people? Because we want them to pay. I can't let them off the hook. They've done so much damage. How can I forgive them? You can't let them off the hook, but you are on the hook until you let them off the hook. I like what Lewis Smead said. He said to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. You see, when you forgive somebody, you're really setting yourself free. Will you forgive? Will I forgive? Well, how can I forgive, Paul? They're not even asking for forgiveness. I don't need to forgive them. They're not asking for forgiveness. They don't want to be reconciled with me. I can't stand them, so that's it, you know? I don't have to see them. Do I have to forgive? Look at what Jesus said. And when you stand praying, you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, so this is different. A while ago, somebody has something against you. This time, you have something against someone else. If you hold anything against anyone, what should you do? Forgive them when they ask for forgiveness? No, it just says forgive them. Forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Is there anybody in your life that you need to forgive? Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. You see, we like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? You did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. Jesus says, don't do that. Don't pay evil for evil. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written. What is written? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with with good. You see, when you forgive somebody and you choose to absorb the cost, right? It's not easy. But you are telling yourself, I will never bring this up again with the person that has done this to me. I forgive them. I won't bring it up. Jesus says as far as the east is from the west, right? So I have forgiven your sins. Number two, you're telling yourself, I promise that I will never replay the incident in my mind again. When you choose to forgive, you say, I, I will not do that. And it's going to be hard. The moment that it comes to your mind, you want to you replay it, but you say, nope, I've forgiven them. And there's a cost there. There's a price there. It's painful to, to say no to that. But Jesus says he is the avenger, right? God's justice is better than my justice. God knows. I can trust God to be just. That's who he is, right? He is a just God. Justice will be served his way. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? With good. But you need to get to a point where you actually pray for them. 
that's how you overcome evil with good. Instead of wishing for their ill will, for their demise, for their failure in life, you pray for them. Actually, Romans chapter 12 tells us, bless them. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them, bless them. That's how you know you forgive. And it is supernatural. But it is required if you and I are to embrace restoration. Not only do we need to repent and get right before God, we need to be able to forgive people. And a life that embraces forgiveness is used by God mightily. Forgiveness is tricky in the family because you're always with the people. Look at what it tells us. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of what? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. What does this mean, bearing with one another? It means we have to be understanding of one another. How do we embrace restoration? We repent, we forgive, and we lovingly what? Initiate. Remember, we always have to make the move. But you and I have to repent first and forgive first before we make the move. Because if you make the move and you still have ill will in your heart and you confront somebody, What's going to happen? Sasabog. What does that mean? The harshness of your tone of voice, the manner in which you confront the person, you're not really doing it for them. You see, our, our problem is this. We don't confront people. We keep everything inside. And we harbor onto ill will and bitterness. We refuse to forgive. We should do the opposite, forgive inside and then lovingly confront. Because to love somebody is to seek their highest good. How can you say you love somebody if you know they're doing something that's going to destroy them and you don't say something about it? But you do it in a loving way. Ask the following questions. Beware of being defensive. One question you can ask, how have I hurt you? How can I improve? Will you forgive me? And be patient. God is at work. You ask them. But this is a great question to ask your family members. How have I hurt you? You will be surprised at what they say. One time I thought I was the perfect father until I asked this question. And all my kids, the first time I asked this question, all of them cried. They all cried. Ask your family members, how can I improve? Will you do that today? You ask them. And then don't be defensive. Listen. Then ask them, will you forgive me when you identify it? This is Jesus. He has been betrayed by his best friends, beaten, right, on the cross. And what does Jesus say? Father, read it with me. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The message today is to embrace restoration. It's impossible for you and I to do it unless we have an encounter with Jesus Christ.